All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to today's stream. Hope you guys are having a fantastic Monday and an insanely profitable Monday as well, hopefully. <laughs> uh, today, we're going to talk about perpetual futures. And uh, I'm your host today, Lips42. And with me, I have Aperture. How's it going, Aperture? Hey, hey, I'm doing fine. Looking forward to talking about Equinex. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we also have with us Marika from Equinex. And uh, Maybe you could do a, a short introduction. Um, like what's your, you know, how, 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 you know, your role at, at Equinix, basically? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, guys, for, uh, for having me today. Great to be here. Um, my name is Marika van Cleef. I am the product development lead for Equinix. And uh, as the name says, that literally means I am responsible for um, developing products like the perpetual future we're going to be talking about today, as well as uh, some features for the Equinix exchange. Um, my background is in traditional finance, like uh, a lot of us here at Equinix, actually. Um, I come from a market risk background, um, which is very different and sometimes quite interesting for people to have a risk manager in, in the crypto space. Um, I was working in London for a while, and I hate to say, but I wasn't really an early adapter to uh, to the crypto space. So I only started looking into it about three to four years ago. But I, I got really excited about all the opportunities and the innovation and the development. So two and a half years ago, when I was looking to move to um, Hong Kong, I came across a job at Equinix, and here I am today. All right, that sounds great. That sounds great. So yeah, I like the fact that you like like you said, most people at Equinix actually have uh, you know legacy markets uh, background, and that really shows in the you know the the profit you know the the professionality of of the of the exchange. And maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, Equinix, like what makes Equinix different from all other crypto exchanges uh, out there. Yeah, for sure. So the key, one of the key things for us is that we're trying to bridge that gap between traditional finance and um, and the crypto space. So like I said, a lot of our, my colleagues come from traditional finance, but they also really have that passion for the digital asset industry and um, the crypto space. And I think what, what really sets us apart is that in everything we do, um, we go back, especially in our products, but but everything really, we go back to the basics of what it is that we're trying to achieve um, and how can we best achieve that. Um, so we don't just copy whatever somebody else has done just because they've already done it a certain way. Um, also super important for us is um, investor protection and uh, transparency. So we were listed sorry, on the NASDAQ last year. Um, and with that, we are the first listed uh, crypto exchange where you can trade both perpetuals and spot. Um, and what we really want is for people to be able to come into this space um, and feel like they can get access without losing that sort of, um, or without having to worry about the degree of investor protection and um, regulatory oversight that they are used to in, in traditional finance. Um, with our NASDAQ listing, obviously that means we're, we're um, held to standards of accountability and transparency that are much higher than the other platforms already out there. So for us, that, that really sets us apart from, from the rest of the market. Yeah, I remember the the last live stream we had with uh, with with Equinix. We talked about just this, and they were really like that. That really stands out. The the fact that uh, there there there's so much more pressure on you guys to deliver something of high quality, and not not only high quality but the absolute highest standards. And that really got me very very bullish on on the product. Uh, by the way, guys, before we actually continue and, and talk about the perpetual futures, there is a um, a giveaway here, right? So we have a $50 giveaway in uh, Equo, which is the, the token on the Equinix exchange. So 10 winners who sign up within uh, the first 48 hours of the this uh, AMA is eligible for the giveaway. So sign up using the link in the description below. All right. And by the way, guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, but you already, already know about that. All right. So what is Perpetual? futures and what why should you trade perpetual futures 
Yeah, I think so. Just to go back a little bit, take a step back from perpetual futures. Let me first explain what what a dated future is, because really that perpetual future is very similar to a dated future, and dated futures are are very common product in um, in traditional finance. And what it is really is an agreement to buy or sell something at a certain price at a certain time in the future. So back in the day when these futures first um, first arose. Um, we had, say, farmers that were growing some crops on their lands um, and they knew they were going to harvest them in, I don't know, two months, three months time, for example. Um, and so the, the future for them was really a way to already sell that crop, knowing exactly how much income they were going to receive from that crops. And the same for someone who is on the other side, um, for example, a bakery that needs to buy, I don't know, grain to bake their bread. Um, they can already purchase their grain beforehand and know exactly how much they're going to spend. So neither party in this case has any uncertainty in, in terms of their cash flow. And a perpetual future is very similar to a dated future. But the difference is that the perpetual future, as the name really suggests, it, it never expires. So it's like a contract that goes on um, perpetually, so forever and ever until eternity. Um, to give a bit of background, which I think actually is really interesting. So the perpetual future was invented by BitMEX back in 2016. And in preparation for this call, I went through some of BitMEX's old blog posts to like understand a little bit better how they come up with this. And they actually published something in, in May this year because it was the fifth anniversary of, of the perpetual. Um, and they said so for them in the crypto market, which is open 24 seven and which is um, not something you, you see really in traditional finance, it made no sense to have a dated future that expires when the market is actually is never really closed. So they said, OK, they invented this perpetual future, which goes on forever, um, just like the market goes on forever, basically. And then uh, I went a bit further and actually went back all the way to 2016 when they first launched this product. Um, and it sounded like from, from their blog post that they, um, they actually saw this perpetual future as kind of negating the need to have any other data derivative or dated futures on their exchange. Now, obviously, today, the perpetual future is hugely popular. I think it's one of the most traded products in the crypto space. It's traded more than spot. Um, but obviously, we still see dated futures as well. And actually, it's getting a lot more traction as we get more and more um, institutional investors and more adoption into the space. So um, kind of interesting. It worked out pretty well, but maybe slightly different than uh, than they thought. <laughs> Yeah, that 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 is actually very interesting. I like the the the, the history behind that. Uh, I'm gonna f sound very stupid now, but actually, I did not I, I didn't know that there were Bit Bitmax that actually introduced the, the first special uh, futures yeah. contracts. Uh, that that was that was pretty crazy to 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 know. Um, so, um, why why we all we all know about you know trading perpetual futures, but why? Why should we be trading perpetual futures on on Equinix? So what is what is different mm. from from you know trading it on Equinix as as compared to other platforms? Yeah, so for sure. So the main benefit actually um, of trading perpetual futures over the spot is that you can can trade it on margin, right? Um, so it's it's much more capital efficient than, for example, you're buying the spot. If you want to buy one Bitcoin today, you need to actually have uh, $57,000. Whereas if you want to trade perpetuals, you don't actually really need that. You can use leverage, um, which actually I think is somewhat misleading term, because if you come from traditional finance, then leverage really means if the product goes up, say 1%, uh, your portfolio goes up maybe 5%, and that's not really what leverage is in this industry. It's much more like margin trading. So if you use 10x leverage in the in on on a crypto perpetual, that means that if you want to buy one Bitcoin today, that is one Bitcoin perpetual that is trading at fifty-seven thousand dollars, you only need five thousand seven hundred dollars to to do that. Um, but yeah, why why would you trade it on Equinix? I guess it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier that for us it's super important to go back to the basics and really think about um, what it is that we're that we're trying to do here, like what do we want to achieve? And a very simple example of that is uh, in the naming that we give things. So a perpetual future has this exchange of payment between long and short holders of the contract. Um, on lots of other places, this is called funding. 
but we actually decided to call it basis. And why did we do that? Because basis is a very common concept in traditional finance, and it refers to the spread in a product between different maturities, or in this case, between the perpetual and the spot. And the funding payment or basis payment, as we call it, is exactly that. Every eight hours, you get this on Equinix, and it's based on the difference between where the perpetual traded over the past eight hours versus where the spot traded over the past eight hours. So funding refers more to like sort of an, an interest rate of some sort, whereas basis, that, that is literally what this payment is. Um, so simple example, but, but what it does show is that what we're saying is actually true. You know, we're not just saying, oh, we go back to the basics and like we want to do things better. But even in simple things like our naming, um, that is literally what we do. And this kind of proves that. But also from a trader perspective, for us, it's hugely important uh, that we focus on capital efficiency and flexibility. So earlier this year, we launched our sub account structure for retail. And for in institutional investors, we already had a similar structure. And that means you're really in control of how you want to manage your portfolio and how you want to manage your risk. Through sub accounts, you can have different portfolios. So if you have some core Bitcoin holdings or other coins that you want to separate and not accidentally touch from, uh, from a trading perspective, you can put them into a different account. Or if you want to do a certain trading strategy, you can open a sub account and, and just have that really isolated in that one sub account. So all our settings like customized leverage, cross collateral, we all base that on, on our sub account structure. Um, so you can even have different levels of leverage between different sub accounts. You can have an account where you turn on cross collateral. You have an account where you turn off cross collateral. It's really up to you how you want to manage that. Um, what is also very important is that for us, spot and perpetuals are traded from one account. So there are some platforms where you have a different spot platform and a uh, different derivatives platform. And actually that makes it very hard when as a trader, you want to trade certain strategies, but actually your assets are segregated. So the way we've set up cross collateral, you can just use your Bitcoin directly to trade your perpetuals. You don't really need to hold any USDC anymore. So lots of people in this industry, they, they have a lot of Bitcoin or other assets, and they want to hold that. They don't want to sell that. So for us, having everything in one account and like everything sort of um, centralized, it's very easy to do that. And I think one more thing that I would really like to touch upon today is our liquidation process, because it's really unique in the market. And I think it's very uh, beneficial both for the retail as well as for the institutional investors. Um, so Obviously, I mean, I hope nobody on this call and nobody who's watching ever gets liquidated, but I must admit um, myself, I've been liquidated as well, because, you know, sometimes uh, you just have a view or, you you know, you just want to put some money aside and, uh, as, I as I would call it, take a calculated risk. Um, for us, the way we liquidate is we, we have an additional pool of liquidity for liquidations, and we call this our liquidation platform. So institutions, market makers can quote into that uh, liquidation platform and they know they are quoting for liquidation orders. So they can never be filled in that platform. They can never be filled on any regular order. Um, so it's a really good way for them to um, add some liquidity for themselves. And for the, for the person that uh, gets liquidated, which unfortunately, most of the time is actually the retail trader, um, it adds more liquidity. So that means it reduces your chances of getting assigned to the liquidation reserve. And therefore, or the insurance fund called on, on other platforms. Um, therefore, because you have more liquidity, you generally get a better price. And for us, if we can fill you above our, our zero price, which is called bankruptcy price on, on other platforms, um, you, you can keep that money. So I think it's a really, really innovative way and um, a really interesting feature. But obviously, I hope nobody ever <laughs> needs to use it. But if you do, you know, then it's definitely a benefit over other platforms. Yeah, you, you touched on a few really, really good points here, um, because I think what makes these retail traders being liquidated is because their lack of 
risk management or the mm -hmm. basic understanding of risk management. And um, you, you mentioned, for example, that you have sub accounts, um, which in my experience are awesome for managing risk and, and managing different positions. So you can, for example, have one sub account for day trading where maybe you use a little bit of more leverage to get in a position you want. And then you can have another sub account that's more for longer term and you need less leverage. So you have less risk of being stopped exactly. out or at least not being liquidated. And exactly. I think think one of the uh, reasons I, I, uh, I still want to add on why people use leverage is that um, you have your coins on an exchange. And I think a lot of people who are crypto native don't want their coins uh, on an exchange because if it's not your key, it's not your, your coin. Um, so what they often do is hold a big portion of their portfolio in their own wallets, uh, but they still want to trade with that. So that's where they can add leverage. For example, if you have only one tenth of your portfolio on the exchange, but you want to trade your whole portfolio size, that's where you can use that 10x leverage and still trade your whole portfolio size without the exchange risk. Um, but I know you have quite some good uh, regulatory practices and you are quite a good uh, exchange that is compliant with, these, um, with all these rules. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, for sure. I think you you make some really good points here. And um, of course, like, I think the, the crypto space as a whole is a little bit unregulated still, or maybe even quite a lot unregulated still. But obviously, because we are NASDAQ listed, um, we are just under scrutiny for a lot of things. But, but it's not just because we're NASDAQ listed that we feel like we want to do the right thing. Um, it's actually... For us, it's really important. It's it's what we what we want to do. It's our value. It's like it, it's the the core of our business. It's it's our whole like USP. It's everything we do. So um, yeah, it's I I think it is nice, and I would love to see actually um, more engagement from the regulators and and more different platforms also working with the regulator to to kind of make this work because i think look i've been in this space i've been working at equinex for two and a half years now approximately and it's been such a steep learning curve i don't know you guys must have felt the same like every day there's still something new and um i i speak to some old colleagues in the traditional finance industry. And obviously they know very well all the products that they are used to. Um, but crypto sometimes things work like slightly different. So, so getting that understanding and, and making sure that we educate people of how things work and the fact that you don't have a clearinghouse here, you know, it's maybe it's not so necessarily a bad thing because things just work differently. You don't need it because you have the liquidation process. Um, so I think there's still a lot of work to do there. And, um, and, and I really look forward to seeing how that's going to evolve over the next few years. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Equinix will will absolutely be uh, because it's, it's like you're 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 building a foundation for not only retail traders to come in and and do that in a, a safe manner, but also institutional traders. Obviously, yeah. like if if you, if you have institutions and they're they're going to have a list of exchanges to pick from, well, they 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 will obviously be more interested in one with, which has you know what you've just described. So having having an exchange where you will have obviously a, a, a interest from institutional traders there will also be some added you know security with that with the nasdaq and everything so absolutely i think you you guys will be a, a, a very big player in in the space in the in the near uh, near future i'm sure so I think uh, you know most people watching this that you know we're we're, we're traders and we're uh, you know a lot of people are interested in in uh, you know the actual trading right so Sure. Uh, how do we make money trading these professional futures? That that's that's the most interesting question uh, right here. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe uh, maybe we can uh, you could perhaps uh, share your screen. And yeah, sure. I know I know you wanted to share some some uh, strategies, right? Some trading yeah. trading strategies. Yeah. So so yeah, actually, because I think a lot of people so. I, I'm from a risk background, right? So when I left the bank about two and a half years ago um, and my risk team, everybody was like, oh my gosh, 
what what are you going to do you're going to work in crypto it's so volatile like how can you manage your risk and i think what a lot of people forget is that you can't that because the industry is so young there are a lot of trading opportunities without having to take outright exposure to bitcoin so you don't just make money by buying bitcoin and then holding it forever like i'm i'm sure like that's a can be a great strategy especially if you probably hold for the long term um but the, but you know it's there's just a little bit more to it so let me try and share the screen here and i can show you actually some some of the strategies that we um that we do on equinex and also kind of um demonstrate our customized leverage and cross collateral features so let me know if you can see the screen yeah it's all good we can see we can see the screen here okay perfect so here we've just set like set up like a little dummy account um for you guys to have a look so um i'm just going to move here to the perpetual trading page so you can see here i i've created an account that has like a little bit of usdc in and like quite a well actually also a small amount of, of btc um you can see here our account settings right so this is the default settings when you first come on so maximum leverage is still set there cross collateral is turned off and negative balance is also turned off so now if i wanted to trade um i wanted to buy some some bitcoin for example i can go here um let's say i want to buy a very small amount here i can actually see on our order form here you can see immediately how all these numbers kind of change. So this is something we, we're quite proud of. Like you can see before you action the trade, you can already see how your um, account is going to change. And you can see because I'm, I have cross collateral turn off, even though I have um, a, a total value in my account of $1,000, actually, even if I only want to buy like 0 0.01 Bitcoin, my leverage straight away goes up to like 27x. And even if I want to go a bit more, um, it goes up to, to 55x. So that is literally because I'm only currently using as margin this $20 here. Um, now, if I go to my account settings, oh, I'm used to a MacBook, which scrolls the other way. <laughs> um, I can go here and uh, edit this account and, for example, say, OK, um, I actually only want to use 10 times leverage. Um, but I want to turn on my cross collateral because I don't really want to use that much leverage. Um, so let me just confirm this. So here we go. And I go back to my trading. I go back to my trading account here. Now, because I've now turned on cross collateral, you can see that now actually my BTC here also contributes to my margin. And so therefore, what is very interesting, if I would now buy a little bit of Bitcoin here, I didn't need to sell anything to have a reduced, oh, I'm on the spot for um, apologies. Um, if I wanted to buy this, you see, now I'm only actually using one, one and a half X leverage. And one of the strategies that I think is really easy to, or really nice to talk about today is the basis strategy. So what we talked about previously is that basis. So how the perpetual trades um, versus the underlying spot. And that is a payment that's being made every um, eight hours on Equinix. And the estimate for the next upcoming basis payment uh, cycle here is given here. And this is all um, given from the long holders perspective. So right now, if you were long, so if you buy some BTC perpetuals, your basis will be, will, you will be paying $22.80 for every one BTC perpetual that you hold. Now, if um, I have this Bitcoin here, actually what I can do is run a strategy whereby I'm selling some perpetuals against my spot. Um, and as a result, if the whole market goes up or down, I don't actually make or lose any money on, on the market movement. But because I'm short, I'm still getting this basis every eight hours. 
And when we look here on our um, historic basis, you can see that actually the basis most of the time is a negative number. So that means if you're short, every eight hours you're getting paid this basis. So we prepared an account here, um, which has been running for a while. So this is exactly, you can see this, this person is, is long uh, some of the spot and short some of the future. Now it's been running for a while. Um, it still doesn't have really any USDC because I just took it out this morning because I wanted to showcase to you that you don't actually really need to hold USDC to do this trading strategy. But every day here, every uh, 12 hour, every eight hours, you can see this person is getting paid like a small amount of money. Like it's a, it's only $2,000 strategy in this account, but still you get paid what about like $1.50 um, sort of every, every day. So um, if you take that on a yearly basis, what is that about five, $550 on a, on a $2,000 investment. I mean, that's a pretty good return that you're not really going to get on, on your bank account at the moment. Um, and, and you're not really taking any, any market risk with that because you know if your if if your market goes up or down um you may lose some money here on on your perpetual as you can see there's like some unrealized loss here but you make it back on the spot so basically what what, what you're doing here is you're uh you're you're, you're hedging your your spot position with a a, a short call right uh or or or, or, sure. a, or you open up a you, you open up a future futures contracts to kind of you, you could say that is a hedge against your spot position and you're then getting like your profits would be the uh uh the uh the base what you're what what you're getting from the basis yeah. yeah so in this case like if the market goes up say where, where are we at today 57k if it goes to 100k tomorrow then you wouldn't have made any money on because you don't have any direct exposure to bitcoin but similarly if it goes down to 10k tomorrow you also haven't lost any money um because you're you're net flat on your exposure. Look, you can see I'm, I'm, every time this market goes up, I make money here, I lose money here on this position. So if you want it, if you feel like maybe you already have enough exposure um, or outright exposure to Bitcoin, but you wanted to clip some of this basis, then it's a very easy way to do that. Yeah, That's fantastic. Uh, Would it? So, sorry, something something quick here. Yeah. What? What if if I'm I'm looking at the Bitcoin shot, right? And and we're 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 hitting support, and I'm worried that this this time it's not going to hold. So I can hedge that with a futures position and actually make some money uh, if if the price of Bitcoin drops and I don't have to sell my spot holdings. Yeah. And, and this is also where the whole, everything sort of comes together, what we've done, right? So here, if, if you didn't trade spot and perpetuals from the same wallet or from the same account, um, and you didn't do cross collateral the way we did it, you couldn't run a strategy like this without having either some USDC or like if, if you had your assets in different wallets, you'd have to transfer between the two wallets. It, it would make it really um, inconvenient process to do. Yeah, so so that's where you get that um, that hatching also from across exchanges or across wallets, and and even you get paid to do so because you know yeah. a lot of times in the bull market the basis is 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 um, like the long paid shorts basically, and if you're shorting, you always get that basis, and they they call this this okay. strategy uh, for for the people who who just. Um, we haven't watched my futures webinars. They call it a delta neutral because basically you're long and short the, the same assets and you're actually not long or short or neutral. Um, the average neutral. And uh, so you don't have risk uh, uh, for the position, no directional risk. How That's how they call that. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't matter if Bitcoin goes up or down, you lock in the value you have and by doing that, by just providing basically some liquidity to the market because you're short um, and have an active position, um, you, you'll get that basis. And I think one of my, my favorite ones, I think uh, when the bull market is really, um, really progressing and really nearing at a top is that um, you can do this with perpetuals, but you can also do that, for example, with quarterly futures. And exactly. You um, you you don't sell your your Bitcoin, but you start to short the the asset that's actually higher because that's where perpetuals and quarterly futures start to 
uh, trade above basically the spot price and you can sell that one and you can sell it for what they call a premium, the, the, the price that's above the spot price and you get even more profit. And what we know about these bull markets is that eventually that premium evaporates um, because there's maybe too much leverage in the market, uh, but at least you can um, take profit you can take extra profit because of that premium um, and and stay on the sidelines basically, but you you still have an active position. So that's uh, the funny way to profit from, from this and uh, not yeah. risk it too much. Exactly. And what you say is really interesting actually about the leverage because generally what we see is when the market goes up quite quickly, um, this spread actually increases because of the leverage feature. Um, and so the basis is generally a bit more profitable if you're the short holder or more expensive if you're the long holder um, and vice versa when the market goes down quite quickly. I mean, sometimes the spread inverts and um, the short holder ends up paying. So it's not like a strategy that you can just sit there and like wait and never monitor it. You, sh you should obviously still um, keep on looking what, what what's going on. Um, but yeah, I mean, $550 yearly return on a two thousand dollar in investment like that seems like a pretty good yield to me i, I can see why you left the bank because <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can't get that there yeah yeah, yeah you don't just... get that anywhere and and this is the thing right crypto industry it's still so young and people don't realize all they see is initially i think is is the volatility and like oh my gosh this looks scary and it goes down quickly and it goes up quickly and whatever not but you know, there's a lot of inefficiencies that we can still make money off without actually risking all our money. And that's that's awesome. I think that's also why uh, futures trading is uh, the most important. And I think also in the future, we'll see some more with options where they also yeah. do more betting on volatility or the lack of volatility in some cases. Mm -hmm. Um, which often are delta neutral, but you're betting on something different. And it, yeah. it takes, you know, it, it takes a while to get that. And I think for new people, it isn't always the best approach uh, because, you know, they just know a chart and they want to go up or down. Um, uh, but often it's, it's a lot safer. So uh, it might take some effort to understand these principles, but like you just shown, they are really easily executed and especially if you have good tools and you have good statistics like you yeah. show the basis point you know every hour how much money comes in you can extrapolate yeah. that a little bit um yeah you that's that what makes it a lot easier so it's nice that you have all these statistics uh, on your platform too yeah and this is when you really see like how everything comes together, right? Because sometimes maybe it's hard to say, okay, but why do you do sub accounts or why do you do this? But actually you need to see everything together and then the opportunities it brings. I, I mean, obviously I say this because this is my job and like, I, I really like it, but yeah, I think it's, it's really nice to, to see something different like that. Yeah, like uh, you know, we can go back and you know talk about the the actual uh, actual platform here uh, because I, I remember in the last uh, AMA we had um, uh, you talked about um, how uh, you're going to make a lot of changes to the the interface and that it's probably going to be one of the uh, pr probably the best trading interfaces uh, out there. Now, for example, uh, I'm I'm trading a lot through uh, a, a a trading bot so i'm actually trading through like a third third party and not, not on the actual change at times but with uh, you know with, with xmanx uh like you, you obviously understand that uh th the way the the trading platform works could become a part of your edge right as a mm -hmm. trader the better you know the platform and the more customized it, it it can be the the you can actually you know use that in your trading and find and refine your edge that way so i really like that fact with with the uh, the way you're setting up the, the whole user interface. Because honestly, you look at crypto exchanges today, like most of them it's just it's 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 a joke, you know, how, how yeah. they all set up. It's 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 almost impossible to to do it in a you know ha have you know do it in a smooth uh, as a smooth experience. So I really really like that. Yeah, I like that you're saying that because it's a bit of an internal job that we have that obviously like our jobs in a startup, it's it can be straight, quite stressful, right? And some of these platforms, when when you look at it, like I, I feel like it gives me stress just looking at this platform because it's so unorganized. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, 
the UI, honestly, the new UI that we are working on, I, it's really amazing. Every time I see it, I'm like, oh God, can, can we just have it tomorrow? Um, obviously that, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day or whatever they say, but um, <laughs> it, it's really nice. And you know what I think is, is really interesting because obviously we want to target uh, professional traders and institutions because we feel like there is still a lot of room um, for them to come into the space. But of course, we also want to serve the retail customers or like people that are like relatively uh, new to the to the crypto space. They should also feel like they can come to us and benefit from all these features that we provide that would also benefit them. But the way they would want to see things on the UI is very different from what a professional trader or an institutional trader wants to see because they're just used to having things in a certain way you know they may not care about the graph whereas you may really want to see the graph and our new ui will allow you to really customize your own um the, the whole thing you can just make it your own basically and i think that that will just be it's it's so exciting honestly like i wish i i, I could show you but um unfortunately we have to wait a bit longer <laughs> Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that. I think uh, you, there has also been mentions of you know something that is very important, and and, and the fact that you we're we're trading um, crypto, but with this exchange with with Equinix, we're we're getting we're getting a, a you know legacy uh, traditional market protection, which is huge. Uh, there's like it's a big difference between uh, the the uh, the standard exchanges, right? Mm -hmm. And something that a lot of people have talked about is how uh, exchanges like to well not like to I, I don't know like I, there's been rumors of exchanges uh, trading against their own customers and um, yeah. that's obviously a bit of a problem you know and uh, so maybe maybe you could uh, you know, explain why that is not the case with with Equinix. Yeah, so we just don't market make on our own exchange. Like for us, it's a no brainer that you could never do that in traditional finance. Like it's just, it, it's it's not even something that is negotiable. Like we just don't do it. So every every dollar of volume that you see on our platform is a real dollar of volume. Um, and and also for us, we only count one side of the trade. So if you and I, Lips, if we if we do a trade, so I'm long, you're short, for example, um, we do one dollar of notional that only counts as one dollar of notional, not one dollar for me and and one dollar for you. Um, so so the numbers and everything that you see, I mean, you you can just really trust us, and that's our DNA. That's what we do, um, and and that's very important for us. Yeah, I love that. I really like the fact that you know you're 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 building ex an exchange with 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 a, a focus on on trust, and that is something that it's not it's not there in crypto. I, I, mm -hmm. I, you know, Abitur talked about how you can use uh, leverage trading and f future contracts as uh, a risk management tool in a way that you don't have to hold the uh, the the money on the exchange, and that's that that's really only done in crypto. You know, like. It, it's like in the legacy markets with a with a uh, proper broker. It's not like you can only have ten percent of your capital on the exchange at any given time because you're afraid that you're going to lose all the money because the exchange will run with it. That's just that's not really how it goes, and that's not how it's supposed to be. And obviously, in the future of crypto, that is that's how it's going to be. So you taking that step and showing that it's not only possible, it's it's obvious. It, it's just yeah. a great step. It's a great step forward. Yeah. Right. So, so do we have? Sorry, go Yeah, on. go ahead. The same no, also in, in the coins that we list, right? Because the other day I, I saw this video on um, on YouTube, I think it was, of uh, the, the Squid Game coin. And I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but somebody is talking about like the market cap of this thing. And suddenly it like completely, the bottom falls out and it goes to zero. And that's just something like that would just never happen for us the whole process of the coins that we list, like we want to bring actually protocols that we believe in um, and list only coins that we feel like uh, we can trust. And, and so therefore, when you come on our platform, like, you know, whatever you can trade, you can trust it. So um, yeah, 100% agree with what you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I like that. I've seen that you're, you're you're slowly but surely adding more contracts and more coins to to trade, and that is obviously, like I said, it's it's. I I, I do understand that it could be a huge process to actually, you know, uh, uh, look at the products and actually mm -hmm. make sure that there is 
they, they are they're safe, right? Because like I said, I mean that Squid Game token or whatever it was, that's obviously not the first time. You you have tokens. I mean, it, it's it's a crazy industry that we're uh, you know we're, we're we're working in. And it's just absolutely insane. And to have coins like that listed on on your exchange, that would be a c catastrophe. Like that would you know obviously okay. not. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and so, I think uh, there is also like if you do um, from an exchange perspective, you need to ha make sure that there is enough liquidity because there can always be bad actors coming into your exchange and then see if there maybe are gaps in that liquidity so they can move a coin very, very fast. Um, so, and uh, yeah. I, I, I think I want to add, like, it's always good to have that extra check and always check if there is enough liquidity. Because I, I, see, I have seen exchanges that are still running coins or adding coins when there is almost no liquidity there. Um, yeah, so, so feel free uh, to join in. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I just wanted to say, like, that could never happen for us because we do actually have some controls in place. So um, if there... So, so there's, like, for example... Uh, if you type in accidentally the, the wrong limit, like a fat finger uh, typo, as we say, there are controls in place. You could never be filled more than 5% away from where the current mark price is. So that is like, regardless of the liquidity of the coin or not, actually, that's another thing where we take what we've learned in traditional finance and apply it to the crypto space. Um, so that, that just couldn't happen. Yeah, that, that's, that's, awesome. huge. That, that, that's really, that's a huge, huge thing. I mean, honestly, that that you, so it's impossible to, like you said, you know, somebody coming along and you know doing that, you know, fat, fat figuring or whatever it's, whatever it's called, you know. Um, so you're you're only actually getting filled within five percent. Well, I mean, say you put in a market order, right? And there's very very low liquidity, and you put in a market order to buy something. If you don't have any controls in place and the liquidity is low compared to the size of the order you send, you may get filled like all the way through the book and, and end up spending, say it's on Bitcoin and there's not much liquidity, you may end up spending a $100,000 uh, for your Bitcoin when that's nowhere near actually where the price is. So in that case, we kind of cap it at 5% away from um, from the mark price. All right, that's that's great. Really, that's really... I never really seen that before in the in the crypto space. I'm not sure if you you're unique with that, but you might be actually. Um, so let's see if we have any any more questions. I don't know if Aperture, if you have any uh, any questions. No, I think uh, we can go ahead with the next questions. Yeah, well, the next the next question would be probably I think the last question because we we don't have much time. So let's see if I can find any any more questions. So guys, if you have any questions, just let me know in the chat and uh, yeah, let us know yeah, about that. In, in the meantime, uh, I'm really interested. What are the next steps for Equinix? Like, what is in your development? Uh, and we we can hear about now. Always interested in uh, yeah. You no, that's a great forward. question. Um, I think we have some really exciting things coming up. Um, dated futures is one of them. So Aperture, as you were saying, like the kind of basis strategy that we talked about and we sh I just showed you on, on the platform with dated futures, there it opens up a whole lot more opportunities because you know at the end of the dated future, at the maturity, it's going to trade at exactly the same price at the spot. So if you see today your dated future is trading, I don't know, $100, $200 above uh, your spot, you can do a similar strategy and you know at the end of it, um, you basically have made this $100 or $200. Um, dollars now one other thing and this is the first time i think we are announcing this so super exciting for everyone um who is watching is that we are working on a new eqo airdrop and for every new coin that we're going to list people that hold a certain amount of EQO for a certain amount of time. And I'm not sure exactly about all the details yet, but you're going to get an airdrop of every new coin we're going to list um, going forward. So, I mean, that is just super exciting and really worth getting in early because, I mean, hopefully uh, there are still many, many coins to come, right? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I, I think we have some questions in, in the chats. Should we um, look at yeah. those? Yeah. Um, there is a question from Phil. Um, are we able to set up 
perp limits in anticipation and also what are your advanced trading tools like a stop loss or a, a take profit maybe icebergs or trailing stop losses uh yeah so we do have some take profit stop losses um they are all there on the order form you can obviously um set up you can send normal uh limit orders um buy sell so yeah definitely we do have some some of those and i think um when the new ui comes hopefully it's all like a a lot more intuitive to um to find those okay awesome awesome and i think there is also another question on uh, under perpetuals here um so the next platform is perfect but more derivatives would be needed today there are only the bitcoin perpetual and ethereum perpetual uh you talked about the date futures but maybe because you list the dot and um you would want to see a perpetual future for those coins too like what yeah. what's in the planning for those yeah, so we're always looking at more uh, products, especially on the derivative side. So that's something we really want to build out. At the moment, our focus is really on getting dated futures because the thing is, once we have like that basis for all these products, it's very easy for us to to ramp up. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard to do everything at the same time. And when you do everything at the same time, then at the end of the day, like um, you're not going to deliver maybe the quality that you want. So dated futures are, are uh, currently our focus, but we're also looking for sure to add more um, perpetuals. So um, I can't really say anything about what is coming when, but 100% there is stuff in the pipeline. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I think we, um, we have another question about um, the delta neutral strategy. So Joseph mm -hmm. mentions that long spot short future is a well-practiced arbitrage strategy. Uh, what on Equinix makes it that you can do this uh, quite well on your platform? Yeah, so I think that goes back to kind of what we discussed earlier. So the fact that you can trade everything from one account is a huge benefit because you can now set up your cross collateral for your BTC so that you don't actually need to hold any additional USDC as capital. And therefore, it's super capital efficient. Um, if you want to trade, say, well, as they pair the example, $2,000 of Notional, you can buy $2,000 worth of spot long and you can use that spot as collateral for your short perpetual. So you don't need to add another um, part of USDC, in, in our case, um, to open that perpetual trade. And also because, um, because you're market neutral, you won't really ever um, get liquidated on, on that position. Whereas if you have both sitting in separate wallets and, and you, you, you need to like fully fund your uh, perpetual notional, so you need to use only 1x leverage to make sure that you never really get liquidated. So that, I think, is a huge benefit. Awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely, it all comes down to how you can manage risk. And the more tools yeah. you have, the better you are able to do that. So I, I definitely like that you can do that. Um, I want to I, I want to just remind oh, yeah. remind people quickly about the the fifty dollar giveaway. So ten people will win fifty dollar. You use the link in the description below. You have forty eight hours, and uh, use the link, and you will be able to win fifty dollar in Equo, which is the, uh, the 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 native token of the Equinix exchange. Ebitur, I'm not sure if you uh, have, have we talked about the you know the the, the future of Equinix and uh, how. Uh, how we'd see it involved in the, the, the crypto space. In the space? Well, I, I think um, what I still have as a comment for, for that is um, I, I think there will be more, more and more institutional flow. So the in institutions have been quite hesitant in, in joining the crypto space because, you know, first the volatility, but also all of these exchange risks that there were and having a regulated exchange helps with that. So uh, we see that more and more that uh, still there is a lot of money sidelined because they have that knowledge gap. They don't know how to trade and with what platform, you know, we've seen that you can have like 
institutional uh, strategies that, you know, by estimation, give you 20% APY uh, or APR. Um, and, and you can execute them here. Uh, but on top of that, because they, they get, go in, I think uh, exchanges probably will also build more high quality products because they have to. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, Marika, uh, how do you see that in, in your future? Like what clients would you attract more? Um, and, and what, you know, what, mm. looking forward, who will be trading on your, your platform and with what tools? Yeah, I think what what you say is so true, and and definitely over the last, I think even over the last year, we've seen a lot more uh, people coming into the space, a lot more adoption coming, and and I think there's so much still to come. It's actually a really exciting time to be working in this industry as it kind of matures. I think for us. Um, as I said previously, our, our main focus is uh, institutional investors or professional traders, I should say. Um, but really, we want everybody to, to feel inclusive. So um, we, I mean, for a retail trader, it's great opportunity as well. Like, why would you need to be treated differently from, from a professional trader? I, I don't know. So um, on Equinix, you know, we, we give you the same sub account structure um, that we actually originally thought of for, for institutions because... When you work in a bank, you have all these different trading books and different desks. Um, and that's kind of where the idea came from. But if you're a retail trader, then what, why would you not get access to, to a similar thing? Like, I mean, um, just just the same, right? So, um, so yeah, I think for us, definitely target focus, professional traders, but um, retail, like everybody, I think there's just so many opportunities, different opportunities for different people. Um, the UI will be an amazing um, uh, change and uh, super exciting for people to see. So, yeah. Yeah, that levels the playing field. And that's what I think is beautiful. Like you, you can have institutional great products, uh, because crypto is, is open for everyone. And if your platform mm -hmm. uh, makes that possible, I think that's that's a beautiful thing. Uh, yeah. There is one question about account security. Um, um, the, lots of people use two-factor authentication, and I think some users mm -hmm. use the YubiKey. Um, and I think that they would want to see this as a feature. I'm not sure if you have this planned or maybe uh, later on uh i'm not actually sure this is not something that probably sits within my remit um but uh, i i will check with the team um we always open to suggestions so let me let me have a look um and uh yeah we'll have to get back to you unfortunately <laughs> okay no no problem no problem and i think this gives a good bridge for us to go to where people can reach you like could you Tell yeah. us if you have a Twitter, uh, what website. Of course, the link is below, so sign up for that giveaway. Yeah. Uh, but maybe also share share Twitter and so. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you can always follow us on on Twitter, Telegram. We have a news channel as well as a community chat there, um, and you can get updates for airdrops, product pipelines, etc. Um, when we can share them. Um, we also, I would love for everyone who is on this call to, to sign up and give this perpetual trading a go and, and see how you get. And obviously, um, if you get stuck anywhere, then you can also always reach out to us, um, at, uh, our Twitter or Telegram or, or, um, our support function. So when you go on the trading page, there is a little sort of blue, um, what do you call it? Like a chat box where you can submit your questions. Awesome. So, yeah. Good for con customer feedback. If you have a problem, just reach out. Um, they will definitely take a look at all of that. Um, yeah. Libs, anything to add? Well, well, only that I'm very excited about the future in crypto because when you have companies like this coming in and they're showing that they're really serious, they got, they got, you know, they they got, they they try to build on the the trust that crypto is, is really lacking. So I'm really excited about the, the, the future of, of crypto and the future of exchanges like Equinix. So I think we are actually getting close to an hour now. And uh, this has been a, a wonderful uh, live stream. 
And uh, yeah, I would like to thank everyone for for joining today and remind them about the giveaway. You can you win fifty dollar in Equo if you use the uh, link in the description somewhere below. And uh, yeah, that's it. I would like to thank uh, Marika for joining us and sharing some uh, really great tips here on trading uh, futures and, and showing the Equinix exchange. Okay, so thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. It was really nice to, to chat and um, yeah, great. Thank you. All right, have a great Monday, everyone. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in, in, the, in the next live streams, which are starting shortly after this one. All right, take care, everyone.